Uh, hi there, thank you for joining me today. We're going to be doing some remote sensing within the ArcMap environment. Uh, I do have Landsat scene, uh, but it's a raw digital number. So what we're going to be doing today is to learn how to convert digital numbers to reflectance value. So basically we're going to be doing an atmospheric correction. And after that, we're going to run some band ration in like NDVI and NDVI. The NDVI stands for normalized different vegetation index and the NDBI stands for the normalized difference built up index. So uh, with these two band ratios, we should be able to, in NDVI, we should be able to distinguish between the greenness or the thickness of a vegetation cover. And the NDBI allows us to easily identify built up areas. So it distinguishes between built up areas and other land covers. And this can be useful uh, in terms of uh, making decisions when you're doing some land use, land cover map classification. And um, I have been able to go to the metadata for the particular lens that scene I have to copy out some of this information that I'll be needing for a conversion. So the formula for the DN values to reflectance values is the band specific multiplicative band multiplied by the raw digital numbers. That's the band specific itself. So if you're converting a blue band, for instance, so you're gonna impute your blue band at this point, and you're gonna add the reflectance additive band number, which is all available in the metadata. And I have copied it out here already for all of us, just to make life easy for us. But by the way, you're going to have this uh, metadata file. If you have downloaded the Landsat scene, uh, this is the metadata file. And all of this information that's in my Microsoft Word were just copied out from this file. Uh, so we're going to be needing sun elevation to correct for the sun elevation. And this is the sun elevation itself. And um, this is the sign for the sun elevation. So if we go back to my formula up here, this is the formula for correcting the sun angle. So after running this formula, I want to correct for the sun angle of that particular day so I can be able to uh, effectively correct my data more accurately for the particular day that it was taken. So because I know the sun elevation for that particular day, which is given in my metadata, I can correct for the sun elevation, the zenith solar angle basically for that particular day. So let's go to ArcMap. I have a Landsat scene, like I said earlier, for somewhere in this world. And this is uh, the scene showing at the 3 to 1 band combination, which is the true color, just the way we normally see things. And uh, I like to see colors. So I go to 4, 3, 2, which is uh, basically the false color combination, they call it. And this helps us to easily identify vegetation so all the red areas we see are vegetations and this uh, what color is this green blue cyan basically are the built up areas and uh, the darker red are wetland vegetations and let's get on so i do have my band four here which is the it corresponds to band red the red band in Landsat 8 data and uh, band 5 corresponds to near infrared and band 7 corresponds to shortwave infrared. So if we just go back to the formula, the NDVI needs two bands, which is the near infrared and the red, and the NDBI, the built up index, needs two bands as well, which is the shortwave infrared. Actually, uh, I should change this shortwave infrared and uh, wave infrared yes so wave infrared minus near infrared divided by wave infrared plus near infrared but before we do this we want to get the reflectance value which will need this information so why we need the reflectance value is because we don't want to confuse the pixels we do have pixels within the scene of different digital number values but these are just raw digital numbers that have been gotten directly from the satellite sensor and it must have gone through several 
complications and errors like uh, atmospheric problems, cloud cover, scattering in the atmosphere on that particular day that the data was taken. All sort of things might cause some uh, misinterpretation fr from the F to the satellite sensor. So in order to not perfectly correct it, but to a large extent correct it, so that we can be able to derive more useful information from that, we're going to be running some algorithms using the data we have from the metadata file to do an atmospheric correction. So let's get started. Uh, what we have here in the in the Microsoft, sorry, I do have a bad software that I've been dealing with for some days now. The voice sounds bad. And um, we're just going to be putting in these values into raster calculator. So what I do have here is um, raster calculator. I do have it here, but normally you want to go into the app toolbox or go to the search and type in raster calculator. I just like it easy. So I have customized it and put it up here. So I do have my raster calculator. If you can remember our formula, our formula says uh, the band specific multiplicative value multiplied by the digital number itself. So we're going to start off with the band red. So the if I just go back to sorry on my other screen and looking at what I have from the I'm just going to bring it here. I'm looking at what I have. So this is what I have and um, it says uh, my multiplicative value is 0 0.002 and my additive value is minus 0 0.1. I'm just gonna go back to app map and put that in. So I'm gonna start off with an apparatus, put a bracket and I'm gonna say 0 0.00002, which is the specific band multiplicative factor, multiplied by my digital number, which is the red itself, the red band, plus my specific band additive which is minus 0 0.1 so I'm going to put another bracket here and plus minus 0 0.1 close bracket divided by the solar angle which is um, this so I'm just going to copy this so this is the sign from my sun elevation so I'm correcting all at once for the atmospheric correction and at the same time for the solar elevation of that particular day and I'll go back and paste my sign from the solar elevation I'm just going to let it go to the default geodatabase and I'm going to call this red underscore ref for reflectance so I know it's uh, it's been corrected for reflectance oops what is that okay I need to put one more bracket here and okay hopefully it should work and now we do have the reflectance value for the red band and normally it should range between uh, minus one to one actually with uh, the further it diverges from zero the higher the value and that means there is a higher reflectance within that band and for red band normally the built up areas and the bare soils reflect higher than vegetation so the vegetation here looks very dark, which should probably be between the lower values. And I'm just going to involve my raster calculator one more time, or oh, <laughs> second time out of many. Create two more brackets, and uh, the multiplicative factor actually is the same thing for all the bands here, you see. So I'm just going to still do basically just about the same thing so it's going to be 0 0.00002 multiplied by this time around I'm going to do it for the near infrared band and then close parenthesis plus minus 0 0.1 close parenthesis divided by I'm just going to paste my sign for the solar elevation there we go to the default geodatabase I'm going to call this NIR for the infrared underscore ref for reflectance and I'm going to OK that 
hopefully I should get a reflectance value for my near infrared and it's ranging between minus one and one with uh, anything above zero basically uh, 0 0.12 to be highly reflected within that spectral wavelength I'm going to bring up my rust calculator one more time parenthesis parenthesis 0 0.00002 multiplied by this time around for shut wave infrared and I'm gonna close parenthesis minus 0 0.1 close parenthesis divided by my sun elevation let it go to the default geo base again and I'm gonna rename this SWIR for shut wave infrared underscore REF for reflectance and I'm gonna click OK and hopefully I now do have uh, atmospherically corrected bands for red, near infrared and shut wave infrared. So what I'm gonna do here is just click on this, hold and shift, click on this and remove this just to walk, walk in a clean way. So I have less things uh, in my table of contents, I'm not that confused. Uh, so I still do have my composite band and now I have my three bands basically that I'm going to be using to do some band rationing so basically I have been able to achieve my first objective which is the digital numbers to reflectance and now I'm going to go on to run some band rationing like NDVI and NDBI and we could see what it looks like and how we could be able to integrate these two other analysis so now I know the formula for the NDVI is uh, near infrared minus red divided by near infrared plus red so I can still just do that within uh, the raster calculator or in my other video I've showed how to run NDVR using the image analysis window which is right here if you don't have it you can go to windows image analysis and it's quite easy to do it there because uh, you can just click on the button once and it runs uh, but I don't want to use it again because I used it in my other video. I just want to use a different way of doing it uh, In case of you guys who are watching me uh, So what I'm going to do here normally you want your NDVI or any band ration in your doing to uh, Come out with floating values uh, So we're going to let ActGIS to know that we want it to be in floating points uh, Well, I've done it a couple of times just by putting just directly and it works fine but just to be on the safer side today and just for the sake of you guys uh, I like to do it this way too so I'm gonna let it know that I want it to be a floating so I'm gonna say floating double click on float here if you come here in this uh, tool set so you're gonna find floating here you need to double click on it and it comes with this two parentheses around it and I'm gonna say near infrared so now I'm working with the atmospherically corrected bands so I am hoping to get more useful and more accurate uh, information from this uh, so near infrared minus red got parenthesis put the division sign back to float again and I'm gonna say near infrared plus red I'm gonna let it go to the default geodatabase change its name to NDVI and OK. Perfect. We now have a NDVI model, and I'm not going to talk about it now. I'm just going to quickly run the the second band rationing so I can come back to all of them. And we're going to run for uh, the NDVI, which is the normalized difference built-up index. I want it still to be in a floating point so I'm going to say floating but this time around I'm not using the uh, red I'm using the shut wave infrared rather so I'm going to say shut wave infrared minus near infrared divided by floating again shut wave infrared plus near infrared let it go to the default geo database again I'm just going to rename this to NDBI I'm gonna OK that and hopefully I should get a normalized difference built up index model and um, basically what I can do now is I can take all of this out 
nice and clean. Okay, let this go. So I'm left with uh, these two layers. So I'm just gonna symbolize this to make it look better and see how things have been represented spatially. So uh, earlier I said the NDVI is normally useful for identifying uh, the greenness of area and healthy vegetation. So if I just go to the, I just double click on the NDVI layer actually, and it lets me go into the layer properties and I go onto the symbology tab and I can do all different kind of stuff with this, but this is just a quick analysis. So I'm just gonna let it, uh, okay, I'll just show you guys. Uh, the classified actually you could do it into different classes based on how you wanna look at your data. For now, I'm just gonna leave it as stretched. Uh, I'm gonna get a nicer color, maybe light green to dark green. I like using this for vegetation actually. And you're able to see the differences in the colors and it gives us a better idea of uh, how the vegetation within this area are doing. If we look closely into this area, we can see how this this is actually a farmland. It looks much more greener than this other bit. So this could be uh, this could be prob uh, probably crops that are growing. And it's also useful to uh, put keep in mind the particular date that you're looking at for the Landsat data. So if you're looking at uh, uh, a wet season, you're probably hoping to see more crops growing rather than if you're looking at the dry season uh, i don't know where you are in this world but i do call seasons wet and dry uh people say winter and summer and um i do have the ndbi here i'm just gonna do the same thing to it but keep in mind the ndbi is meant to help us identify areas of uh, buildings so maybe you're you're doing an analysis to determine uh number of houses in a particular area or you're trying to include it to a model where you want to be able to differentiate between uh, agriculture agricultural area and um, built up areas so this can also be very useful for you in terms of making decisions and i can click on this and go to the layer properties and symbology tab you can do the same thing like classify based on classes I'm going to leave it a stretched and I'm going to do uh, this time around. I'm going to do something funky. I'm going to use this one. Yes, and the higher values are uh, expected to be the NDBI values actually, which are going to be the built up areas. So basically, uh, all of this purple colors are my higher reflective value within the uh, normalized difference built up index which means uh, these areas are the built up areas and probably this few bits here you see I, I am not very much convinced that these are built up areas this could probably be a problem of mixed pixels uh, when you're dealing with remote sensing data you do get a lot of that mixed pixels and um, other stuff uh, this could also be uh, beer soil due to the similarity in the spectral reflectance uh, in the built up uh, properties in bare soil and bare land uh, sometimes you seem to get similar spectral signatures actually so basically this is what i just wanted to show during this video so i've been able to deal with this first problem uh, digital numbers to reflectance which is just uh, basically atmospheric corrections I was able to correct for sun angle and we're able to run NDVI and NDDI and there are a lot of stuff you can do with these two models in terms of making a decision in town planning and uh, a lot of people use NDVI for agricultural monitoring and a whole lot of stuff uh, so thank you for watching and I hope you liked it if you did please click on the like below and subscribe thank you